Testing, testing. All right, we're good to go. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. I'm Travis Cannell from Orchid. And uh, we're very well known for our bandwidth marketplace. And we happen to have a VPN application that runs on that bandwidth marketplace. Uh, it gives privacy to a lot of people around the world. Today, I want to talk about one of the core pieces of technology that our VPN app uses to send really, really tiny payments. And it allows the VPN app to be uh, uh, one of the only pay-as-you-go VPN apps where you're sending tiny, tiny millipennies worth of payments to the VPN provider as in a continual payment stream as that VPN provider is providing you service, which is very trustless because you're not trusting somebody by paying them $5 a month and hoping that they're not going to screw you. At any time, if they're screwing you, you just stop paying them, and then they stop giving service. So nano payments are a way so that when you're trading in a decentralized and trustless marketplace, you don't build up too big of a credit balance on either side of the equation. Uh, the payment system are very scalable. Um, and so when I think about this talk, I think the, one of the core pieces to think about is what is a theoretical minimum size payment you can send? And probably something in the order of like a clock cycle. You can't really get much better than that. Um, and you know, we think that we're, we're pretty close with nano payments uh, in getting there in terms of the few key operations that you need to do to send a tiny payment. And then we use uh, the law of large numbers and probability to send and transmit that value um, so that over time, the on-chain payments sort of represent the probabilistic payments that get sent. So today what I want to cover during this workshop is just discussing this concept a little bit. Uh, I want to show you our DAP and how you can move money into our L2 which uh, what I just described, we kind of describe it as a L2 payment protocol. So uh, it runs on nine different blockchains right now. So we're on Avalanche and Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum. Um, we're even on Optimism, which makes us an L3. But uh, it's kind of how we like to send, uh, or we, 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 wanted, we want there to be sort of options for you. We kind of have this idea that your L1 is a commodity for our L2. Um, and then last, I want to show a couple of examples. So Orchid's VPN app is just an application that uses this, this tech. And uh, I have another sort of demo that we have hacked together for you guys to show you some other cool things that you could use. Uh, we have two bounties right now for anyone that can use nano payments in their system. Um, so anything that requires paying for some compute resource or something that is very small in value. Of course, bandwidth, VPN bandwidth is a commodity. It's not worth very much. And that's why when you're running the Orchid VPN, you're getting kilobytes of bandwidth and paying um, millipennies for that. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you guys. So this is the, uh, the Orchid DAP. And one of the core things about uh, Orchid's L2 that makes it a little bit different is we actually manage two sets of keys. So we have uh, your L1 key, which is going to be managed by Meta MetaMask. And then we roll and use a second set of uh, keys that are your L2 keys. And I don't want to get into the reasoning why that we have those two keys. Uh, it was for some decisions that we made early on. And um, it, but essentially how it works is you can select here. So when I said the nine blockchains, here they all are. So we're on Aurora, Avalanche, Binance, Celo, Phantom, Ethereum, Optimism, and Polygon. I'm going to show Gnosis right now because I just happen to have a Gnosis wallet with some XDAI in it. So, uh, and once I connect that wallet, 
It shows me my wallet balance. Um, and then here's where I put in the public address of my second set of keys, my L2 keys. And uh, right now, you can roll that using like the Web3 library. There's a lot of different ways. You can manage your own keys um, pretty easily. Just need to roll a new Ethereum wallet, and then you put in the public address here. Uh, our app, actually the VPN app, has a manager, and uh, you can actually roll a new identity, uh, which is kind of the uh, word we use for the L2 keys, the public address of the L2 keys. You can copy it here and get a little warning saying, hey, this isn't a Ethereum wallet. And when you put this in here, then you've now connected up like all the key parts of an Orchid account, which is again, the L1 key, the L2 key. And uh, I can now move some money from my balance, uh, you know, in, into the Orchid account which uh, is nice on Gnosis, it happens pretty fast. And, um, and the balance portion of the Orchid account is how you pay for things, it's just what gets spent down. Um, and then the deposit portion is another thing that you uh, have to add some funds for. The deposit prevents a double spending attack on the network. Uh, for a reason that I'll get into in a second here. But I just wanted to show the DAP. This is how you add funds and kind of looks like a... Then once this updates, you can see that this is 95, 99% efficient. And I'm gonna jump back to the presentation and kind of describe a little bit more about how this sort of works now. So, um, and I'm just gonna jump around because I wanna get into some of the examples for you guys. And so basically, uh, when you're sending a nano payment, what you're going to do is you're, set, you're using the law of large numbers and probability. So the idea is that rather than some, sending somebody a dollar, you send them a one out of a hundred chance of winning a hundred dollars. So if I'm trying to send, if I'm trying to pay for something and I want to send you a dollar, rather than sending a dollar a hundred times and incurring a hundred transaction fees, I'm going to send you a one out of a hundred chance of winning a hundred dollars. And if I do that enough times, the right amount of value is going to be sent. So that is where the probability comes in. We call it stochastic payments. Uh, we call it nano payments, probabilistic payments. Uh, it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, and essentially, you use that probability to transmit value. So uh, there's a couple of other details in there. The receiver, um, the payee generates a random number. The payer receives that number and then uses their L2 uh, private key to sign what we call a lottery ticket and send that payment. And then the payee, every time the payee receives a lottery ticket, they're like, cool, and it's like a scratch lottery ticket. And they see if it won or not using the claim call. And the money is all held in our um, nano payment smart contract, which is the smart contract that I just showed you that our DAP talks to that's on nine different blockchains. So if that is a winner, the claim call will correctly pull the right amount of money out of that account and send it to the payee and the payer will be debited and all as well. <laughs> so basically when you're running our VPN app, what's happening and a lot of people come up to me and they set up an Orchid account and they're running our VPN app and they don't understand why their balance isn't going down immediately once they connect. And what's happening is that uh, they're setting up a balance and then they're starting to send these lottery tickets, but they don't send enough of them to, to trigger an on-chain payment. And uh, so it kind of goes down in chunks, the way is one way to think about it. But uh, as you're using our VPN app or any application, or uh, hopefully somebody can build something here today using this payment protocol, uh, but what you would expect is that as you're sending this stream of small payments for some sort of very cheap resource, uh, that over time, 
uh, the on-chain activity is going to reflect the sort of probabilistic theoretical activity. And so that's what we see. Our app has been live for uh, three years now and uses this scheme. Um, you know, so we have successfully been sending all these, these payments. And we're now branching out to look at other use cases for this technology of sending really tiny payments. Um, so, you know, in our VPN app, and I'll jump into our VPN app right now. Um, uh, okay. Oh, no, no, there we go. Yeah, so um, here's what our VPN app looks like. Uh, I'll go ahead and connect. It'll probably screw up my internet connection, but uh, basically I have a, a, an account here with OXT, and uh, right now I'm connected to a VPN server, and it is using our payment, payment protocol to pay for this tiny amount of bandwidth that I'm using right now. And... Um, and that's, that's kind of how it works. Uh, you know, at any given time, the, the VPN server, the provider in this decentralized network is getting enough payments where, you know, if I, if I stop paying them, like no one's out any money here. So that's one of the nice things about having really small, um, really small payments again. And uh, we have an account manager, and so you can kind of, when you, grab, when you start using your L2 keys, you can actually have multiple accounts and things like that. But um, uh, you know, this is kind of one of the core applications that we have running that uses this tech. And what I'm excited to show is what, this is kind of what we hacked together. We're calling this nano diffusion. So is anyone familiar with stable diffusion? Has people been doing some image generation out there? Yes. Um, so, you know, what, what, what does it cost to generate an image? It's like a couple seconds of GPU time. Really depends on the size of the image, the version of stable diffusion that you're running. But if you're using a really modern GPU, you're talking about it's like a couple seconds per image. Um, and so how, how could you possibly bill for that? You know, if, if, I don't know if you guys are familiar with mid-journey or some of these other payment systems, but of course, you always have to have this like monthly payment model for API requests. So if you, you know, want to charge somebody, it's like Infura has this problem. Anyone that sits behind, anyone that's trying to bill people for API requests has this problem. And they're like, well, we're going to tier this thing. And if you want to use a little bit, we'll charge you five bucks. And then if you use more, it'll be 10 bucks. But it's never really perfect. Uh, you know, and, and historically, we've just never been able to send really tiny payments because really tiny payments, credit cards, actually require the use of, uh, you know, they have like a 25 cent minimum fee, which like you can't, that's so high for anything like this that we're talking about. Uh, but here we kind of hacked together this little demo. We have now uh, created an API for our nano payment system that is using this. And so you can connect an account. And again, the account is really specified by the L1 funder, which we call the funder, which is like you're usually managed by MetaMask, and that's how you moved funds into the L2. And then our, uh, and then the signer, which is your L2 kind of key set. This is uh, the actual key. Uh, I know that's not really secure, but we only have a couple dollars in there. So I trust you guys. So we'll uh, send in our prompt. And here we can see in the logs that we kind of have this little system that we hacked together that is correctly um, charging the user for uh, one, uh, I think it's actually three runs of this. No, it's one run. Yeah, so this one image was about eight millipennies that you can see here. And so this has been correctly billed from this ORCID account to pay for the exact amount of GPU usage that this provider wanted to provide. So this is kind of a scalable system where you could come in, you could make five images, you could make five million images, uh, and the billing would all work out. And you know, it's one of, one of the things that work and we think about a fair amount is you know, what kind of business models and what other cool things people could build if we weren't under the tyranny of different business models on the internet today 
The first one being the advertisement model. Like, I wish I could just load up a website and send somebody eight millipennies and be like, I don't want to see any ads ever again. Never do that to me. Don't cookie me. Don't do all this stuff. Like, I'll just pay you for your server resources or pay you for this article. Maybe it would be 20 cents for this article or whatever you wanted to charge me, but there's just really no good payment system that can handle, you know, tiny payments and larger payments uh, kind of together. So um, that's the core of, of the kind of nano payment system. And I'll jump back over here. So to do, yeah, I think, you know, there's some trade-offs here. So one of the really nice things about this system, again, is the ability to send tiny payments, settle things up, never run an account balance with anybody that you're trying to trade with. Um, one of the trade-offs is finality. So obviously, if you're trying to get your money out of an exchange or something, you don't want them to send you a probabilistic amount of money that may or may not, you know, you may, may or may not be able to pull out. Um, so you're, we're trading a little bit of immediate finality uh, for the ability to kind of scale down the amount of money that we're sending because uh, all these payments are going off chain. And you know, what are the costs of sending the payments? So it really depends on the, like uh, when you think about sort of the cost, how the costs all kind of roll together in this system. Uh, the, it really depends, of course, on the L1 that you're on, but um, I think it is about, I forget the exact amount of gas costs right now, but, um, you know, and on, on Gnosis, which we like to, to use a lot, I mean, it's like a couple pennies uh, per transaction, which is really nice. Ethereum, obviously, kind of depends on what's happening on the network. So, um, and I guess lastly, one other thing I want to describe is that, You know, in our DAP, we have this notion of uh, efficiency when you look at an account. And what that really means is it's kind of like um, when the provider goes to claim money from this ORCID account, the efficiency is uh, how much in the gas costs they can expect to pay. So uh, when the provider gets a, a winning lottery ticket, they have to go into your nano payment account and pull the money out. And obviously, if when they go to do that, if the gas costs are spiking on Ethereum and it costs $1,000 for them to get that money out of that ORCID account, the efficiency of that ORCID account is very low, if not negative. So um, you kind of have to have a large, uh, and this is kind of related to how big your deposit is. So um, hopefully that was a good enough explanation. Uh, but, but basically the... Yeah, the efficiency of these XDIs accounts typically always 99%, uh, even with a smaller 10, 5 cent, 20 cent deposit. Um, but, you know, here's an account that basically has, and we also kind of calculate how many tickets you have remaining. So each payment uh, is twice the size of your deposit. So this has, um, oh, it's half the size of your deposit. So then you have uh, nine tickets that are available on this ORCID account. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and yeah, this again, you're paying like eight millipennies for this GPU time and settling up with this provider who's providing this service right away without having to do any sort of crazy ad revenue business model or sell your user data business model or paying a monthly fee that you might forget about business model. I think the whole internet is a software as a forget service. You know, it's like, what am I paying five or $10 a month for that I totally forgot about? And, you know, I used to work in advertising and you just test that landing page, which is like, well, maybe it's free for six days or maybe it's free for five days or maybe it's free for 10 days, but you got to put your credit card in. And, you know, you as a user, you're like, oh, I'll remember. I'll remember to cancel that in two weeks before they bill me. I definitely will definitely remember that. And you never do. And then a couple of months goes by and you're like, what is this thing? Um, you know, we're hoping that with the ability to settle and send smaller payments, kind of open up some more uh, business models here on the internet. And 
Uh, I'm kind of curious if there's some questions out there. Uh, happy to open up to anyone that's followed along, or if there's any part that haven't described yet uh, or you don't understand. Yeah, sure. Oh. Check, check. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, just uh, with regards to the settling of the basically the lottery ticket, right? Do you see uh, a, even a possibility of people gaming it? So you know, let's just say it's one in a hundred chance, and then you're using the service, and oh cool, I've used it. You know, it's been queried like 50 times or something. I haven't paid. I'm gonna just start a new account. And then keep going, right? It's just a cynical take, but I'm curious what what you're thinking. Yeah, I think I think probability is one of those things that, uh, yeah. I mean, if you use it 50 times and a payment isn't triggered, I mean, arguably you still sent value because I think really how we think about it is that when you send one of these lottery tickets, value is being transmitted just because it's a fair lottery that's provable and it's governed by a smart contract. So you, if you're trying to, if you're doing that and I'm taking lottery tickets from you and giving you a service, it's really on me to make sure that the lottery tickets that you're giving me are valid. And just because you sent me 50 and a payment didn't hit, you know, doesn't really mean it. It just means that like, if you keep liking the service and you keep paying me, you know, using the law of averages and large numbers, like over time, the right amount of value is going to settle. But, you know, you're right on in terms of if there's very few payments and the, and, and the numbers are very large, it does start to feel like gambling. But if you start to think of like, uh, you know, if you imagine like you're just, if, if it hits, it's gonna be three cents on Gnosis that's paid out. You know, and then you're sending these lottery tickets that have a one in 10,000 chance of paying out three cents. That's kind of what's powering our bandwidth marketplace right now. So when you're using the VPN, those are quasi close to the numbers that you're going to be paying uh, on the Gnosis chain. Um, so it's really about trading. And like, if you're getting good value for your 50 probabilistic payments, you're going to want to keep trading with me. You know, and so then it, it's one of those things at any time, if I look at your lottery tickets and I'm like, you know, I can see from your lottery ticket how much money you have on deposit in the smart contract and how much is in your balance. So I know like, oh, this guy doesn't have a deposit. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to trust this guy. Uh, and the deposit on the Orchid account, when you move money into the L2 using our DAP, the deposit's locked for 24 hours. So that kind of gives the provider 24 hours to get their money if you give them a winning lottery ticket. So hopefully that was kind of, this kind of a long explanation, but that was a very good question. And there's even other little pieces where, imagine not that, you know, you send 50 payments and never, you know, one never hits and you're, you're stoked. What if you send two payments and then they both hit? <laughs> so that could happen as well. So, you know, that's where you have to send enough payments and trade enough over time to where it's going to sort of make sense because, you know, you could start up the Orchid VPN app and start buying bandwidth and then just right out of the gates, you know, you're charged three, three cents and you're charged five cents. Uh, but, you know, just that's kind of how probability works. So, you got a question? Yeah, sort of uh, in the same line of thinking here. I'm, I'm, maybe I missed the explanation, but... Um, what what's the rationale behind uh, the the stochastic payments? Like, is it because you you're trying to uh, not have to wait for settlement of the transactions, or is it just a smaller transaction, like a commitment or something? Yeah. So the the benefit here is that you can lower the transaction cost for sending one payment. So it's, it's all research actually that's based on a really good paper called MicroPay that was actually done in the 90s, like way before any blockchain tech. And they, were, they did it because there's a minimum credit card transaction fee. How can I pay five cents for something? That was what they were trying to deal with. There's really no way. You know, or, or you can pay somebody five cents, but the credit card companies is gonna, you know, they're gonna charge you 25 or 50 cents per transaction. So the amount of money you're transmitting is like nothing compared to the fees. So enter the blockchain world and, you know, 
I could send you, so if I want to send you, you know, a dollar a hundred times as you're providing a service for me, I'm sending you a dollar, you're providing me a service, like you, you're running your GPU, I give you a dollar, you're giving me cool, stable diffusion images, and everything's good, and I keep doing that. Well, if I send you a hundred dollars, you know, we've just incurred a hundred transaction fees on the blockchain. So the whole idea of stochastic payments is that we're sort of mitigating that, we're rolling those up into one transaction. So one really good word that we also use is probabilistic roll-up. So we're kind of like using probability to roll up transactions rather than you know, taking all those transactions, like a real roll-up works. We're just kind of using probability. And so the big thing that we get is the ability to send small payments. And I've been talking about cents, but you know, it keeps going down. So you can send payments for millipennies or less uh, to almost where it gets like ridiculous. So it's like even calculating like the number of payments you could send almost just doesn't make sense because it's, it's it, you know, it's just it sort of depends on how small of a, of a ticket you want to write. And then, then basically you get limited by the computation time to read a ticket and decide if you want to accept it for payment or not. So. Yeah, so um, I don't know if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, just keep your hand up, we'll send a mic over there. Just wanna pitch our bounties. We have a bounty right here, GitHub Orchid Protocol NanoPay demo. You can find more information about that or on the, the bounty platform. Uh, my question is about the roll up. So when you roll it, do you like, is there an optimum time when you like, okay, we've got a full block and that's when we do the roll up or is that also, how is that decided? Well, okay, so roll up, <laughs> it's just, it's more of a kind of like a, an easier way to explain it. But what basically what I'm saying is if I send you a hundred chances to win a hundred dollars. So if I send you a hundred payments and each one is a hundred chances to send, you know, uh, to, for you to win a hundred dollars. I think I said that right, but I think you get the gist of it. The roll up happens when you get a winning ticket. See, so I sent you these hundred payments and then suddenly you're like, oh, this one's a winner. And then you grab the hundred dollars from me that, what I'm saying is a roll up is that represents probabilistically 100 payments that I've sent you. And as our friend pointed out here, you know, there's a little bit of gambling here because we're talking about probability. So it's not always going to perfectly land. And the, the larger payments you send with the fewer amount of transactions, the more variance that you'll, variance is the mathematical term for that, but the more variance you'll experience. If you send smaller payments with under like, you know, more of them, so you send a thousand payments for a penny each, then we're going to settle up more and there's going to be sort of less variance. But yeah, we describe it as a probabilistic roll up in that way. We're using probability to roll up these transactions into one on-chain payment. And so our API, um, kind of lets you set the ticket, you know, when you send one of these payments, uh, the question is, what's, you know, what's the win rate? What's the probability that the receiver is going to be a winner? And if they win, how much is that going to be worth? You know, and that's kind of how you can mitigate how much money you're sort of sending. And, um, you know, here's some links here. You take a screenshot of this if you're interested. And for all the hackers out there, uh, come find us. We're Orchid. Got the Orchid uh, purple t-shirts on. Well, actually, they're gray as well. Uh, but we'll be hanging out around here for the next little bit. I'll be off stage. And we'd uh, love to help you with the bounty or answer any further questions. Thank you.